is anything as far as all the developing stories in the country is concerned at this hour there are twin demonstrations uh, taking place by nasa supporters one in kisumu and the other one in mombasa we're going to bring you those pictures shortly there you go in mombasa the protesters have already been disrupted by the anti-riot police officers earlier the protesters were led by mombasa governor ali hassan joho and on the other side of the screen you can see bonfires have been lit there in kisumu all these by by uh, the NASA protesters who are demanding changes at the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission. They're saying that they're not going to participate in the October 26th presidential rerun if the status quo remains. Well, those are live pictures once again from both Kisumu and Mombasa. Remember, these protests were banned by the government uh, through the acting interior cabinet secretary, uh, Fred uh, Matiang. In studio, I have uh, two uh, individuals here, of course, Honorable Jared Okello, uh, Nyando Member of Parliament, as well as Honorable Samson Kipchichirke, who is the Nandi uh, County uh, Senator. And Honorable Jared, it seems NASA supporters have made good their threat there. Well, definitely. Uh, when Matiangi pronounced himself on this subject, mm -hmm. uh, we knew we were going on the streets regardless. And uh, I can see the police is trying to met force on very innocent protesters. But, you know, that is just a short-term measure, a short-term gap that uh, will not cow us from uh, moving on with our demonstrations. Uh, it has disrupted businesses, mm -hmm. and as I said, the cost of democracy is huge. But uh, we are not doing it just for fun. We are doing it that this country can have a very clean electoral uh, infrastructure that mm -hmm. Jubilee is trying to fight. Now, yes. if you allow me, I would want to delve into uh, a few issues that have been raised by the gentleman here. Mm -hmm. Uh, the Prime Minister, Right Honorable Raila Molodinga, had invitations from the U.S., <coughs> certain European nations, and the U.K., mm -hmm. and he chose to only respect one, which is going to London to preside over a talk on democracy to certain institutions. Yesterday, as you could see from pictures being sent from the U.K., he was meeting very serious uh, and senior government officials mm -hmm. uh, in the UK to talk about the Kenyan political status. Mm -hmm. So he, he didn't just go to the US to run away, as somebody would uh, allege. In any event, Raila has absolutely nothing to run away from this country. This country needs him, and he needs the Republic of Kenya. Mm -hmm. Of course, those are very rare invitations by politicians to get. Uh, I can confirm that uh, Deputy President Ruto and Uhuru Kenyatta will never ac get such kind of invitations to go and talk about <laughs> democracy anywhere but, but in the it, world. But it's, good, but it's good you've cleared the air on what uh, the former Prime Minister anywhere in the world. is doing in now, the Now, about no, IBC, no, if you allow me. Let me get Honourable Samson's uh, reactions to this. And the reason as to why the demonstrations were banned in CBDs, that is in Kisumu, Nairobi, as well as Mombasa, is because of looting and destruction of property, property. and because business have been paralysed. What you're seeing today despite the demonstrations being banned by government, we're seeing more distractions, you know. We're seeing businesses still being affected. So is there any difference, really? Thank you. Maybe uh, let me say this. What we are seeing on our national televisions, that is not a peaceful protest. They have been christened peaceful in the name of hooliganism. Mm -hmm. And you can see the tires are being burned. You can see someone, I've seen someone holding the sticks. This is no longer a demonstration. But in Mombasa, the demonstrations were pretty much peaceful. They were, pre but, but the police have the reasons. You know, we should allow also police to do their work. Their work is to maintain law and order. And if they have any reason that they suspect that uh, the, the, the demonstrations are not going to be peaceful because mm -hmm. we are aware most business has lost, as we have said. The Kenyans, their li normal lives have been affected in the name of uh, fighting for democracy. We, this is not fighting for democracy. This is fighting for power. People want to use unconstitutional means, the jungle law, to get into their power. And that is why they have realized they cannot go through the, through the, 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 the legal process that we have in this country. They have decided to use force into the, to, to, to ensure they get into the power. And that is the, that is the, that is the whole issue. Let me develop something on what my brother said on the presidential, uh, the IBC allowed, because it is intertwined with what we are seeing in this country. Mm -hmm. Paragraph 73 and paragraph 74 of just this Mativo's judgment or ruling the other day. He decided that was a statement of law that allowed IBC to form the basis of including other eight presidential candidates and also in spirit and letter of Article 38 where every Kenyan has a right to any for this. And I think Article 140 that 
when the, this election, presidential election was invalidated, mm. it meant that we are going not for a return, but a fresh elections. And therefore, when, this, when, the, when the IBC uh, wrote a letter and decided to add more presidential candidates, it meant that, and I think that is when now NASA miscalculated, because Raila pulled, pulled, pulled out of the race just a day before, mm -hmm. before he thought that a Kuro uh, petition mm -hmm. would be dismissed by Justin Mativo. And I think that's, that's some of the issue. Mm -hmm. Finally, on these issues of demonstrations, we, in this country, I think we need to up this game. In fact, you saw the member of parliament of uh, Stare, I think Charles, uh, the famous Jaguar, wrote mm -hmm. a letter that we need to relocate the, the IBC officers from anniversary towers to even in. What I'm proposing is that let us have a picketing zones in this country mm -hmm. so that people can go to Uru Park, picket the whole day, the country moves forward so that we stop these issues of accessing CBD, stopping our businesses, looting our businesses, and even loss of lives. I, I can see people are just busy discussing, and I, I think the police has put it to the, uh, the record very straight, that all the, 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 the issue of anybody who was uh, injured or has threatened the life or lives have been mm -hmm. lost, the police are investigating. And that is what we want to see that we ensure it's, if there are the yes. reasons mm -hmm. that these demos ought to be banned and allow this, the IBC to prepare for general elections mm -hmm. only 15 days away. And then now, you know, it is interesting, and I want uh, my brother that it is interesting that uh, Baba has decided that it is ironical that he's presenting a talk on democracy mm. while he's ensuring that, that there are illegal uh, and illegal demonstrations going on. Honorable in Samson, the name of fighting uh, for Honorable Judge, you react to him shortly, but uh, let's cross over to Lillian Towers once again, where IBC commissioners are at this hour in a consultative meeting with some of the election observers there. Once again, uh, Commissioner Rosalina Combe is at this moment speaking. Let's listen in. Both political parties tell you no, we are not a banana republic. We will not have UNDP procure from another company. You just have to go with Angurea or not print ballot papers. So as a commission, there are times we have to take decisions. And those are the decisions that we have taken. You consult, you give options, you give offers. You, but in the end, you have to make decisions that you think are in the best interest of the country. And I think that is what we as commissioners have been trying to do as much as possible, is to make those decisions that we think are at the best interest of that Kenyan voter. We wish to affirm and reaffirm that the polling station remains the locus of an election. That is where the will of the Kenyan people or the voter is expressed. And that is what we've been emphasizing and that is why we've been focusing on the training of presiding officers. We have over 200 presiding officers who will not be participating in the election, who participated in the previous election. We have vetted those who had mistakes and they will not be included in the election. We also have some returning officers, uh, we could provide details at a later point, who had errors in their processes and will not be participating in this election. So it's not like we have moved on uh, without making any changes to some of them. I mean, I know that there are still a lot of other issues. There are, there are demands for more changes within the Secretariat. But those are demands that this, the commission is still going to continue reviewing and looking as it, as it works on its operations. But I really want to assure you that, at least on our part, we are trying to do our best. We know, as you have said, rightly so, that uh, the elections are political. But it's not only the IEBC. It is not the responsibility of the IEBC to only to create a conducive environment for free and fair elections. It is a shared responsibility for all of us, for religious leaders, for the political leaders, for the business community, for all of us as Kenyans. It is our responsibility to ensure that that conducive environment to allow us to manage a highly political exercise is done. You cannot abdicate that responsibility as Kenyan people and look at Chebukati and say it's Chebukati to deliver this for us. Chebukati and his team can do the technical preparations, but the rest is to all of you. Thank you. A clap for her. Thank you so much, Commissioner, for responding very ably to those issues. There's only one issue remaining, security, isn't it? And election amendments. And election amendments. Um, we, we have a presentation to that effect where we'll see the metrics and how we're going to do it. On the election amendments. Yes. <laughs> And communication strategy. This, and there's also someone who is going to respond to that. And allow me to invite Commissioner Kuruga to respond to the issue of security, and then we proceed. 
Thank you very much. Uh, it's important. Well, those uh, pictures we're getting for you from Lillian Towers once again, where some of the IBC commissioners are engaging in a consultative meeting with some of the election observers. And uh, clearly, IBC is preparing for that presidential rerun at a time when NASA is still holding protests in Kisumu as well as in Mombasa and Nairobi at all. They're still regrouping in Kisumu, for instance. Uh, they've already uh, blocked some of the major highways there. They've lit bonfires, and there is a very heavy presence of police in both uh, counties. They actually in Mombasa, the demonstrations have already been uh, dispassed by the anti-riot police officers. Now, Honorable uh, Jared, before we wrap up, react to what Honorable Samson earlier raised and perhaps give us your final comment before we end the show. Well, my brother talked about uh, fresh elections. Mm -hmm. uh, and in that respect, they are for saying uh, that uh, uh, under Article 38 of the Kenyan's Constitution of Political Rights, everybody can be allowed to run. That should actually be the law. Mm -hmm. Everybody should be allowed to run. But you remember, IBC has firstly settled on those who only participated in the August 8th election. Mm -hmm. Number two, under Regulation 51 of the elections, mm -hmm. um, when nominations are done, then one is presented with a Form 20 that clears you to run as a candidate, as a presidential candidate. Now, if you go to Regulation 52 and 53, it talks about signing Form 24A in case one would want to abandon or withdraw from the race. Mm -hmm. Now, we are asking, immediately after the Supreme Court pronounced itself, Chebukati went ahead and said only President Uhuru Kenyatta and Prime Minister Raila Mulodinga would be the candidates eligible to run mm -hmm. in the next round of election. Yes. Now, they are saying they have to sign another Form 24A. Mm -hmm. So we are asking, when did they give us Form 20 mm -hmm. that will then be nullified by 24A? What should essentially happen is what exactly we did by presenting a list, uh, a letter to IBC of withdrawal. And that should be taken as, uh, 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 as law. So uh, another thing is, uh, well, he has talked about fire, you uh -huh. know, lighting fires. And then he would want to say that that lighting fire means the demonstration is not peaceful. How does fire become provocative? In fact, in the African context, uh -huh. fires were meant to pass a message that something is happening <laughs> here. Uh -huh. uh, and that is the message they are, uh, they are passing to the public. But fires don't do anything. Fires are and and oh, by the way, no, they are not burning somewhere. anyone's property. <laughs> they are actually put by the sides of the road. And finally, uh -huh. Jubilee has not come out clearly, including my brother here. When his blood brother called Davis Chircher goes into the IBC server and make changes to 10,000 documents, and they're just quiet about this. And by the way, Chircher is uh, poised to be there uh, chief agent again, mm -hmm. so that he can perpetuate the very ills. I mean, this is a walk, a wash. We are not going into another ping pong games with this uh, uh, jubilee uh, adherence. Honorable Samson, your uh, final uh, comment. Quickly, on a, on a quick note, uh, Davis Chirchir being uh -huh. our chief agent. I think he has explained well on the form 24A. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. okay. I want just to, re to respond <laughs> to him that he says Davis Chirchir is our chief agent, and every party has a choice. They can decide to choose who becomes their their chief agent, and therefore those accusations they don't know whether Noria not there, somebody act, and those are some of the issues that, that you should deal with IBC because David Chirgi, Davis Chirgi that did not work for IBC, he works for Jubilee. The second issue is that we, we want to be very clear as Jubilee. Mm -hmm. On 26th October, what we are doing at the moment is going to the grassroots where the votes are. We are aware that the courts do not have votes on all the demonstrations. The votes are with the people and that is why we are going to the ground. We are receiving from even courts to the entire country and we know 26th of October will be a very peaceful uh, election election day, presidential election day, and we want to to say we want to say we are satisfied with our IBC are doing their preparations, mm -hmm. and we hope the elections we had Kenyans to maintain peace. Finally, we want to tell our brothers, especially the NASA Brigade, that there is no option in this country to resort to jungle law or any unconstitutional means to power, and we will not have room for Nusumukata government again in this country. Honorable Jared, speaking about peace, you know, what we're seeing on our television right now, the live pictures from both Mombasa and Kisumu, we're seeing anti-riot police officers engaging the protesters there. This might easily lead to casualties, right? Well, definitely, and many a times the demonstrations are... Uh, 
uh, peaceful mm-hmm. until Jubilee police uh, r- run a mock <laughs> and charge <laughs> the people police. to act a different <laughs> way. Uh, I, I wish the police would just play their cardinal duty uh, in line with Article 245 of the Constitution mm-hmm. of just maintaining law and order so that even if there are certain criminal elements uh, in a demonstration, mm-hmm. they would be able to be dealt with at that level without necessarily uh, putting and causing bodily harm to very peaceful demonstrators. Mm-hmm. Uh, of course, they, they, they are responsible and answerable to Matiangi, and therefore, even if the orders given out by Matiangi would be that unconstitutional, they'll just have to play ball. I mean, you also have to understand the situation that the policemen are in, uh, considering that they are uh, a force that only respects the commands from their superiors, mm-hmm. however legitimate and void they could be. Mm-hmm. But but finally, you yes. know when they discuss saying the, the jubilee, I do, I don't know whether this country this country we don't have a jubilee force. Uh, force we have a national police service co- service uh, uh, commission, uh, the, the national police service that has been formed by the constitution, as you said. Number two, when you block you block roads mm-hmm. using tires and rocks. Do you want the police to come and smile? They must assist because normality must be retained because you cannot block the road to deny other Kenyans the, the right. And that is why every Kenyan right is very paramount. Mm-hmm. You cannot block the road and decide. And that is why if you see Jubilee strongholds, it is not that we are cowards. It is because we have decided to maintain peace because we, this country is much more important than others. And they know that there are leaders that were elected to, to any position, be it the Senate or National Assembly, mm-hmm. have a canny law duty of representing their views in a given organized constitutional manner. Oh, so, so, so why, why do you think it's so difficult to implement these small changes that NASA has been calling for in IBC? But I've told you, under the elections amendment bill that we passed yesterday, number mm-hmm. three of 2017, those issues that NASA raised, are, but one of the issues of mm-hmm. what NASA has raised is Jiloba must go and ethnically provide 12 officials, including Kasaid, Torore, and Mohati, and the rest. Mm-hmm. It is because they just want some, to kill some, some of the people like Ezra and Jiloba are very young, and it means you are making IBC in 207. Mm-hmm. The IBC was chased away. In 2013, it was chased away. 2017, it was chased by the same same person. Mm-hmm. And he wants to dictate our referee of risk. And therefore, we will not, the demands of sacking officials is not within the domain of, 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 of the law. We are just preparing the law and we, and we, are, we want to say mm-hmm. every, every independent institution, we must respond and then we should not use intimidation to force officials Honorable out Jared, of office. Very briefly, react to that before you wrap up, very briefly. Well, uh, it is sad that the more things change, the more they remain the same. Uh-huh. You would have imagined that such a young blood coming into the Senate would inject a new impetus that respect democracy and the will of the people. Mm-hmm. But having him as a senator of Nandi, will tell you without a doubt that this country is in more trouble the next 59 years because he's still a young guy and he can be in Senate forever. Mm -hmm. Uh, And that is quite absurd. I thought when we came in as new blood, we would then look at things differently, uh, respect the rule of law and constitutionality so that we push this country forward. Mm -hmm. Now, they talked about changing the, the, the law to make the Chief Justice Mm-hmm. Uh, not necessarily be the one with the, uh, both the carrot and the stick to swear in the president. Mm-hmm. But let me tell you, the Constitution envisages a situation where the Chief Justice may not be in mm-hmm. and therefore the position is taken by the Deputy Chief Justice. But they are saying because the Deputy Chief Justice, together with the Chief Justice, ruled in their disfavor, now they have to pave way for Njokin Dungu to sue in Uhuru Kenyatta. That is exactly what they're doing. <laughs> Honorable Jared Okello, many thanks for your input. He's a member of Parliament of Nyando, as well as Honorable Samson uh, Kiprotich. Cherargei. Uh, yeah. Okay, he's the Nandi County Senator. Many thanks, both of you, for your input in the show. <laughs> Thank you.